Hi guys, so today I want to talk about the dragon setup for black and this is mostly for beginners but really anybody can play it and it's really a setup in the sense that you can play black's moves no matter what and black really has to play something like c5, put the pawn on g6, then cat with the bishop and that's already the dragon setup. So why is it called the dragon? Because a long time ago some guy was looking at this pawn chain basically something like this with a pawn on g6 and let's say a bishop on g7 and a white bishop anywhere and he looked at this pawn chain right over here for black and he said wait a second that looks almost like a dragon and like a constellation of the dragon in the sky and he said wow i think i'll call this the dragon opening and so the dragon variation of the sicilian defense was created so basically this is the dragon bishop this is the piece you value the most it's so important you don't want to give it up for the rook in some cases because sometimes this bishop is stronger and all of your pieces will have great squares to go on for example this knight is gonna come to c6, so let's say white castle somewhere, we put him on c6. The other knight is gonna go to f6, and of course we're gonna castle short, because castling long is a bit scary considering there is already a pawn moved to, uh, that's moved to c5, and not really protecting our king on the queen side if the king decides to castle there. So then, the other pieces like this bishop, well if you have a chance, I would probably trade him off for that knight, and I'll show you guys why, because we really love this square, and if possible, all of our pieces want to control it, if possible. Now let's say he pushed the pawn up already, then we're gonna attack the square with our bishop and knight, but if we can take it for ourselves, that's even better. For example, let's say they go there, right? So then I'll probably move this knight away so I can control the amazing d4 square with the dragon bishop and my knight from c6. And this bishop is really helping because let's say they even take off my bishop and I trade him off for that knight. That's one less piece to worry about when my knight comes to that amazing d4 hole for white and now i'm attacking the queen the queen has to go back to defend the pawn my bishop has a great square my knight has a great square and now my other knight will also find great squares to support his friend on d4 and so that's what happens if they don't push for d4 if they play what we call the close type of sicilians and they don't trade on d4 but what happens if they do trade on d4 where do the pieces go then well let's go from the beginning and we'll take a look the whole point of the sicilian and the dragon setup that comes from it is that we're not letting them take the whole front of the center right we're not letting them have the e4 and d4 square the two front teeth are not gonna stay there for long because i'll break them up and so let's say white plays knight f3 i put my pawn on d6 because i want to take out the knight but i don't like him kicking away my knights right away so pawn to d6 and let's say they take the center with their pawn and are happy to trade it for my c pawn well then i'm gonna trade it off right away right because flank pawns are a bit less valuable then center pawns and so now i have two center pawns and they only have one the bad thing is I am a bit down on space, so space is totally in white's control here, and they control the center, good for them, they have a nice knight 24, you know, that's all great. But in exchange for that, I get my own good things, like for example, I get to attack his center, and now if he defends the center, now there is my dragon setup again with the dragon pawn chain and the dragon bishop coming next turn for example let's say he defends the knight he's trying to castle queen side this time let's see what happens there well first we bring out a dragon bishop and if i can i usually want to bother their bishop like let's say they play something useless maybe something like queen d2 well they didn't stop me from knight g4 and i'm gonna trade off that bishop as soon as i can because then our dragon will have no opposition on the dark squares and black is already better. And if the bishop decides to run, well, I can bother the bishop so that he ends up 
in the middle of nowhere looking at my phone on this six so that's not good for him either and he's free to go to f4 for example like this but i don't think he really wants to get forked with his knight so i'm very happy if he moves that bishop and if not i'll just trade him off with my knight so then you'll say how can white stop the trade of the knight for the bishop? Well, then white can play something like pawn to f3 and say, nope, you can't come here and I'm supporting my center. And that's good for him. You know, that's his right. It's a free country. But now I'm going to make sure castling long is dangerous for him. So first we take out all our pieces. The knight's going to come here. The bishop usually comes there unless he can come to e6. So if this knight is gone for some reason somewhere else, then I'll put the bishop on e6 to scare off his king from even considering alongside castling. But if the knight is here and is being annoying, I don't want to trade him off because then the bishop counteracts my dragon bishop. So I don't want to trade it, I just want to leave it there because I'm very happy if they decide to trade. Now I have the b file, say hi to their b pawn, I have three pawns that can support the center so i can push for like d5 right now i don't usually want to push e5 because my dragon bishop will feel really offended he'll say why are you blocking me what did i do to deserve a pawn looking in my face and it's my own pawn that's not very nice so that's why we don't really push e5 here if anything we push for d5 in the dragon and then if they don't take, well, they continue with what's called the Yugoslav attack. So let's say they're trying to castle long because they want to get the pawn stone rolling right after I castle short and we have opposite side castling. Well, let's take a look what happens then, right? We're gonna castle and I won't show you guys everything, all the ideas for black because that will take hours, but I'll show you black's main ideas. So basically, if they let you, you should always play d5 because when the center opens up and the dragon bishop looks down that diagonal, it's gonna be really unpleasant for, for white trying to fight off our bishop. If he can, he will trade that bishop off with bishop h6, but usually we won't give him much time to do that. So for example here, let's say white tries to trade off my bishop. I'm thinking something like even bishop takes it 3 doubling up their pawns and then moving away my rook but basically I'm not too scared of them trading off right now because most people they, they see a free pawn they say what if I take a free pawn and then they open up the whole board for my bishops and now this bishop's coming here that bishop's coming there I have the open b file I have the open c file all my pieces are placed in in the right job so then my queen will go somewhere like c7 and offer up a rook because if they decide to take the rook they may regret it considering we have a discovered attack on both checkmate and the queen so we're gonna get the queen back right so if they don't take it then i'm just gonna have the open b file the open c file and all my pieces have their jobs right now Let's take a look at what if white doesn't let us play d5. So instead of castling, they have a few other options, right? Let's say they play bishop c4, and that's their main move. Well, in the dragon, this is the probably the scariest line you'll have to face as black in this setup. But basically, the bishop is still very strong, so we shouldn't be too worried. And we can bother that bishop, and we can be really annoying. For example some people they try to go for rook b8 and then after the trade of knights they play b5 and a5 and that's called the chinese dragon and then on the other hand the classical dragon you take out the bishop to d7 and when they cast along you give them something to worry about like the discovered attacks on their own bishop and if they try pawn storming in g4 or h4 h4 i usually want to fight with h5 to make sure they don't go any further and i want to make sure they never open up this h file because their idea is very simple they play h4 h5 um, take take and bishop h6 after which they trade off my favorite dragon bishop and checkmate me with the help of the queen rook battery and we don't really like that do we so we have to attack them first 
So here already my discovered attack is gonna be really scary and even if they move the bishop back Usually our knight's coming in the middle, so let's say something like g4 happens, we can play the knight to c4, that's our favorite square in the open Sicilians, where we fork their queen and bishop and we say you have to give us at least the bishop pair. Then my other queen is coming to a5 and my other rook is coming to c8, so I can finally sacrifice my rook for that knight of theirs. So let's say they play something like h5, uh, h4 and then I play h5. And then they're trying to get their attack across and I bring in my pieces. Well, my knight actually holds the king side quite well, which I can't really say for their knight because now I'm gonna get rid of him. Let's say the king goes there. I'll bring in my other rook and let's say they do something slow. So let's say they take my pawn on h5. Already I'm considering just sacrificing that rook for the knight so I can destroy the king's rook and start attacking him with the help of my rook, with the help of my queen, you know, all the pieces are coming in. So this is just fantastic for black, okay? So remember the Sicilian, we really like the c4 square for the knight, we really like our dragon bishop and we value him above anybody else, he's really our favorite piece. And we love the half-open c file, which allows us to generate pressure on both the knight on c3, which was there before, and the pawn behind, because if the knight ever leaves, I ask this guy a question, and when he goes away, especially if my queen's somewhere else, I take the pawn on c2. So the king is really not feeling that comfy today. So hopefully you guys can use the dragon setup which is characterized by this dragon bishop and very often the other bishop which is helping him cut the board in half.